Well, good afternoon. It's great to um, have you all here in Pakaranga this afternoon. Thank you so much for coming here. Uh, last year, we promised to prioritise the delivery of transport infrastructure that will boost productivity and support economic growth. We also promised to deliver a transport network which makes efficient use of every dollar spent. Not only did the previous government fail to deliver the new transport infrastructure that Kiwis need, they also neglected to maintain what we already have. Over the past few years, potholes have become a nuisance on our roads. Local roads and state highways were both affected, and news stories about punctures from potholes suddenly became common. It was not just Labor's blanket speed limits reductions that were slowing Kiwis down, it was also the terrible state of our roads. In fact, last year there were over six, a record 62,000 potholes in need of repair on our state highways alone. Our coalition government is serious about looking after the state of our roads and the infrastructure we have. And today I'm, now, I'm pleased to announce that over the next three years, the New Zealand Transport Agency Board has confirmed a record $2.07 billion for state highway pothole prevention and $1.8 billion for local road pothole prevention. Compared to funding under Labor's 21-24 National Land Transport Plan, this represents a 91% increase in funding for state highway pothole prevention and a 50% increase in funding for lo local road pothole prevention. We are going to tackle the record number of potholes to get our roads back up to the standard that Kiwis expect and provide a clear pipeline of transport investment to fix our roads. We also know that to get people where they want to go quickly and safely, it is important that people, particularly those in our main cities, have reliable public transport options. Today I'm also pleased to announce that the New Zealand Transport Agency Board has confirmed indicative funding for public transport services across the country will increase by 39% compared to funding allocated under the last government's uh, National Land Transport Plan. This is a record amount of investment in public transport services to ensure that there is funding capacity to support and grow reliable public transport services across New Zealand. By increasing funding to tackle potholes and providing more investment in public transport services, our government is ensuring that Kiwis and freight can get to where they need to go quickly and safely. We are building the foundations for our economy to truly thrive. And with that, happy to take any questions. You mentioned uh, 62,000 potholes last year. That's right. Uh, and, that thing of, and you also mentioned record numbers. So do you have any idea how 62,000 compares to the number years prior, versus the last five years? Oh, that, that was the highest number in the last the five years before that. I think it was a record over the, you know, it's a record number of potholes. Um, and what we're focused here is making sure we're putting the investment in place so we can reseal, rehabilitate and do the drainage works needed to prevent potholes from forming in the, in the first place. And that's a really key principle of what we're doing here. This funding is ring-fenced to those activities which will prevent those potholes from, form, from forming in the first place. In terms of um, damage to Kiwi's property, Yes. Uh, do, do you have a sense of what that looks like cost-wise per year, for instance? Well, I think the agency's produced figures that it's, it's very hard for people to get compensation um, because they need to prove uh, the number of loops they need to go through. My point is, I don't want Kiwis in that place in the first that, that spot in the first place. I want to ensure that we are maintaining our roads to the appropriate standard, and that's why this funding is not only just about increasing funding, but ring fencing it so that it's being spent on those things which prevent potholes from happening in the first place. Increasing the number of kilometres of road being rehabilitated, increasing the number of kilometres being resealed, doing that drainage work, which actually is what keeps the water off the road and keeps that, those potholes from being from forming, is critically important. So. This is an increase in funding. It's also increasing expectations around how we want our roads to be looked after. How will that funding and pothole maintenance, can you give us any indication of how that will be distributed across the country? So uh, so I think the, the allocation there is $2.07 billion for state highways. That's for the New Zealand Transport Agency in terms of the work they do. Um, there's an allocation table that's part of the, um, the, the, the uh, press... Uh, release that I've released today, which allocates how it's going across the, uh, in different regions. So, for example, here in Auckland, I think it's a 74% increase in funding for pothole prevention. It's a significant increase. Uh, Bay of Plenty, it's 61%. Waikato, 42%. Uh, Southland is 40%. Uh, Northland is 58%. So, uh, NZTA has gone through and, and allocated that, that funding for the local road component. The New Zealand Transport Agency will also have to allocate that, their funding um, based on their asset management plan across the country for our state highway networks. And that public transport funding, what will that be spent on specifically? That's about uh, public transport services, so that's making sure we have a reliable, frequent public transport services which turn up on time and which help Kiwis get where they need to go 
uh, in a reliable fashion. So that's an a investment in the buses, the trains, the ferries, those services that you know thousands of Kiwis rely on to get to work each day. Uh, this is a step change in terms of investing more in public transport so they can get where they need to go. Obviously, you know your, your priorities are, are different to what we've seen over the last eight years. Um, I guess, in a general sense, can you sort of talk to, to, to or tell tell the average Kiwi how your plans um, generally, when it comes to the road network, differ to what we've been seeing? Well, it's back to basics. It's about actually New Zealand road users. Uh, they pay their fuel excise duty. They pay their road user charges to build and maintain the roads. That's the number one priority for this government from those funds. So people driving down our roads and using our, and truckies uh, transporting goods and freight across the country, paying their road user charges, our number one priority is building and maintaining the roads to a quality standard so they can get where they need to go quickly and safely. We're not going to get distracted by Auckland Light Rail and, uh, and, and, and let's get Wellington moving. We're focused on our core business of building and maintaining the roading network for New Zealanders. What do you make of Mayor Wayne Brown's comments yesterday? He said uh, that AT is not fit for purpose and that it's been distracted by government imposed mega projects. Well, look, I think um, what he's saying there is that there needs to be greater accountability over Auckland Transport. I agree with him that there does need to be greater accountability over Auckland Transport. They're a delivery agency, uh, and they need to be focused on core business, which is uh, maintaining the roading network in Auckland, uh, and this, this funding announced today will do, go a long way to supporting them. They need to be focused on actually just reliable public transport services. That's what Aucklanders need. Um, and also they need to be accountable to uh, the people who pay uh, whether it's ratepayers or taxpayers. So we agree with that. There's actually a work programme we've got underway uh, working with the Mayor to say actually what is needed to increase accountability for Auckland Transport. Uh, we're in discussions around that topic at the moment. Do you think it's helpful perhaps for him to go on social media, particularly calling it the most loathed organisation in the council? Well, I think many Aucklanders would actually agree um, that actually Auckland Transport um, is not focused on those core uh, basics. And just like I've said to the New Zealand Transport Agency, we want you back to basics, building and maintaining the roading network. Uh, Auckland Transport needs to be doing the same. Uh, they need to stop telling Aucklanders how to, how to live their lives and what type of mode of transport to use and actually just focus on maintaining the network and providing reliable public transport services. That's their role. So the public transport funding... Is that earmarked for any particular projects, or is that just maintenance of...? Well, that's the public transport services uh, funding. So that's to operate the bus network, it's to operate the train network, um, that's uh, to operate the ferries, that's about the services. Uh, the National Land Transport Programme, which will uh, be fully released in late August, early September, will fully outline the investment and the infrastructure element. This is about the operational, uh, continuous programmes that New Zealand Transport Agency funds. Just... Uh Slightly unrelated question, but um, the UN, this question from a colleague, the UN has called for a ban on fossil fuel, fossil fuel advertising. What do you think of that? Uh, look, um, ultimately this government's focused on actually making sure New Zealanders have the energy they need, um, and so we're, we're committed to repealing the oil and gas, ga uh, gas ban. Um, we know that uh, gas is, has half the emissions of coal, uh, and the last government um, overturned the oil and gas, ga gas ban, which actually means we're burning more coal. Uh, which is more pollutant to our environment. So uh, this government's focused on giving, getting New Zealanders the energy they need, but also doubling renewable energy. We need to supercharge renewable energy here in New Zealand. It's wind, solar, geothermal. Get the red and green tape out of the way so that we can have that investment uh, over to, to provide the energy security. So if I was to ask whether New Zealand should have a similar ban that's on advertising of, of fossil fuel, no, I, mean, I personally don't agree, don't agree with that. Ultimately, my view is that um, New Zealanders need the, the energy that they need. We need to have a more renewable uh, supply, and that's through getting rid of the green and red tape, which is holding back those developments. But gas is going to play a critical role in the transition, and the last government's actions have actually made it harder to get the gas we need, uh, and that means we're burning more coal, um, and that's, that's bad for the environment. Uh, and ultimately, we need to have a secure, uh, reliable energy system, and gas is going to play a really important role in that. Just one more from me on Wayne Brown. He, uh, he suggested converting car parks into uh, bus or traffic lanes during peak hours. He said this would be a, a cheap and easy way to get traffic moving in busy areas. Is this something that you would consider? Well, ultimately, Auckland Transport's the road controlling authority for Auckland. Um, they make those decisions. Our expectation is that they would consult appropriately with Aucklanders, and I think that's one of the areas where Auckland Transport has not done a good enough job, is consulting appropriately uh, with Auckland. But you know, today's about saying there's a significant increase in investment in uh, public transport services to make sure we operate that system, it's reliable, it's frequent, 
uh, so that we can uh, support those Kiwis who use public transport to get to work uh, and also reduce congestion. It's also about saying we need to have a step change in investment in fixing our roads and getting back to basics. That's what Kiwis voted for at the last election. That's what we promised to do. That's what we're delivering. Cool. Thank you. Cheers. Appreciate it. Cheers.